How much of the ice has melted over the last 20 years? Well, over the last 20 years, Tyler, the um, uh, polar ice cap has melted by, has increased by about 7% to 14% in the last few decades. And over that time, about a third of its ice has disappeared. In the next, mm, say, by the 2030s, all the ice in the northern hemisphere could disappear completely. That is amazing, Tyson. Or at least on the Arctic ice cap. What are some of the effects this could have on us as humans and our planet? Well, in the northern hemisphere, there would be a bit of a cooling down causing a decrease in food. That would then increase the prices of food, therefore causing more crime in for you know resources. There would then be more outbreaks and civil wars, oceans would be rising, more storms, and eventually we'd just be in an all-out war for resources. We'd eventually be the death of each other. Do you believe this is caused by the increase of emitted CO2 into the atmosphere each year? Well, yes, I do think so, because uh, the last um, 50 uh, the last 50 or 60 years, the increased amount of CO2 is the reason why it's the problem, because the amount of solar arrays that are hitting the Earth warming it aren't, aren't increased enough for it to equal it, the uh, temperature rise, and volcanic activity only reaches t- um, 200 billion tons of carbon dioxide each year, while re-release a startling 30 billion. With this, um, so far in our life in humanity's carbon using lifetime, we have already used 1.9 trillion tons of, of carbon dioxide out of 2.9. And we and sometimes just suspect that we'll use the last trillion in the next 20 years. What happens if we get to that 2.9? Well, scientists predict that if we do get the, if we do go to that and above, we will go to a temperature rise of 2 degrees Celsius and after that it may just not stop after much. Temperatures will continue to rise at a rate that we'll never see before. Even even in the next, even if it won't reach six degrees Celsius rise in the next hundred years, it will be unstoppable even afterwards. Literally, the worst case scenario would be that the the worst case scenario would pro- most probably be where sulfur. Sulfur dioxide gases would poison our atmosphere and destroy the ozone layer, effectively maybe killing almost all life on Earth, similar to some of the worst extinction events in Earth's history. Do you believe all this melting ice could stop the ocean conveyor belt? Well, yes, I do believe so, because as, the, as more ice melts from the Arctic sea caps and from the Greenland ice sheet, more fresh water is pouring into um, conveyor belts like the Gulf Stream, which, power, which brings warm water to the, to the North Atlantic Current, which leads to England and parts of Europe. As more, war, as more um, uh, fresh water goes in, it is less dense than, salty, than salt line water, which would then override it and effectively stop it. Afterwards, uh, North America and Western Europe would go into a deep freeze, possibly within the next decade. What do you believe could happen if, I mean, what do you believe we could do to help stop this problem? Well, there's only probably one way. As long as we stay below 2.9 trillion tons, and if we consult all renewable sources around us, and, and erase all fossil fuels from our economy, we should be able to stop it if we bend the curve within the next 20 years. So you want to move towards more renewable energy? Yes. By, by consulting in solar panels in the hottest, most radiant areas of the planet, w- wind turbines on the, on the ocean coasts and in merry windy areas, and hydro plants on every Colorado River-like river on the planet, we should be able to get enough energy, possibly even more than fossil fuels bring us today. Besides, it may cost more, but it's better than the extinction of a species. Yeah. It'll cost more that, or now, but it'll cost more us in damage if we don't. Yes, mainly in food, resources, and war. Basically, if we do not consult our resources, humanity is going to die. Screwed. Um, okay. 
Has the number of storms of hurricanes gone up, Tyler? There has been a recent increase in the number of hurricane or natural disaster storms all across the world, just from hurricanes, floods, droughts, wildfires, and so on. It's only one or two uh, natural disasters that can't really tie to climate change in just an increase in intensity. How much stronger have the most recent extreme weather events been than they were in the past? I can't say exactly how much stronger they've gotten, but like you said, they also, scientists can't prove that climate change is making or causing more natural disaster events, but it is increasing the intensity of them mm-hmm. and making much more powerful and cause much more damage. And now we're, er, we're up to about $200 billion a year in damage caused by natural disaster. And back in 1980s, we were down to only like $10 billion. So, and that's just in the United States. So. It is a quite a disaster time, though. Uh, what are the strongest storms occurring? Uh, lately, just right where we are here in North America, there's been many strong storms. But also over in Asia... There's been a large increase in uh, earthquakes and many natural disasters, but other areas like Australia have been in droughts for many, many years. And now California has been in a drought for the last few years, just in our own country. Also, there's many wildfires going across Australia, United States, many countries. Yeah, and I've actually heard that within the next year on YouTube that uh, that's California could completely go dry. Isn't that right, Tyler? Yes. Oh yeah, so it's, like, it's quite a disaster. Because California also is supposed to soon get some very extreme rain, but it's so extreme, it's coming so hard, it doesn't have time to go into the ground. It's just going to run right off into the water. Ah, uh, yes. I've heard of that. How can we stop this problem? If we were to stop this problem, I believe this is tied to climate change. It would just be intensity. So if we want to stop this problem soon, we're going to have to start, like you said in your video, using some more renewable energy sources like solar power, wind power, hydropower. They're all, they're very costly, but I believe if we study them more, we can find a cheaper way to do them and a more efficient way to do them. Mm-hmm. Put them all over the, or all, like you said, in areas, even uninhabited areas like deserts are the best area for solar panels. Areas like rivers, you can put them at the bottom and get the strongest currents and still not affecting people that much. Yes, but uh, what I do fear the most is that we may even lose one of those renewable sources in California soon. Yeah, like you said, if we like, yeah, like you just said, if we don't stop this now, we're gonna keep getting more droughts and wildfires that will take away areas we could do renewables or energy sources. Also, if we start putting only a little bit at once, we could make these natural disasters that we already have caused could wipe out some renewable energy sources we use. Okay. What is the biggest storm that has happened because of climate change? I'm not sure directly what the biggest storm is, but some of the, probably the weirdest storm I've heard of is in Indonesia. It wasn't really a storm, but it was, it, there's such a, a fog you think of can never really be deadly. In Indonesia, there's such a thick fog, it actually was deadly. I think six people died because of it. It's too, like, too dense to breathe, so people had to wear masks outside. And that's just like a fog, like everyday fog you see at the beach or something. But it was so thick, it was killing people. Um, was the fog made of anything? Any I'm not sure what it was, but I'm sure it probably also had some gases mixed in with it, if it was that deadly. Well, thank you for the interview, Tyler. Jason? Uh, what, honey, uh, what is your topic today you're going to be talking about? Um, my topic is warming oceans. How quickly has the oceans warmed, or how much average ocean temperature gone up? In the last century, scientists have said that it's gone up 0.18 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's, every year it rises 0.14 inches. What will happen if the temperature keeps rising like that? The water will keep rising, and land will keep going underwater. Do you believe gl- uh, climate change is causing this issue? Yes, because it's warming the water, which is killing lots of species, and it is rising the ocean. So How is it killing the species? Is it like taking away their habitats or putting like, ke- uh, like deadly chemicals in the water? Um, it creates different diseases, too, like warm water creates diseases, and it's also um, damaging the species' habitats. Um, 
how can we stop this climate change from keep causing the uh, our ocean to keep rising in temperature? We could stop putting CO2 into the atmosphere and we could reduce greenhouse gases. And scientists have said that even if we do that, the planet will still keep warming. And um, the ocean could go up 2.5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we reduce 50 to 80 percent of greenhouse gases, that could stabilize them. Uh, how do we and how do we start getting rid of uh, putting greenhouse gases in the atmosphere? Like, what types of reusable energy do you think we should use? Um, we could use <laughs> solar power. <laughs> How big will the volume of the ocean get if the water keeps warming? Um, if the water keeps warming, it'll keep going up 0.14 inches every year, which will, every year, it'll put land underwater, and yeah, it'll rise as much as it can. Uh, what, do you think it's going to keep increasing and rising more each year and eventually start covering more land? How many are going to be underwater? Yes, unless we stop emitting greenhouse gases and CO2. Do you think we're going to see a big effect in our lifetime, or is it going to be like our great-grandkids' lifetimes? Our, I think it'll be our great-grandkids' lifetimes. <laughs> How is this affecting humans? This is affecting humans by, it is putting land underwater, and that'll mean people will have to move away from that area, and that costs lots of money to move. And it's also killing coral reefs, it's bleaching them, and that's killing Habitat. Are there any areas that have already had a big impact by this, either covering their waters or taking away their fishing grounds? Lots of islands have been taken under. Mm. That Were they habitat islands or uninhabited? Both. Both? Yeah.